Okay. Let's see. Our next question is from Roberto uh, on Omega-6 from Nuts and Avocados. Hey, Rob. Just wanted to say I'm a huge fan, and I've been following your podcast and blog since 2011. I really appreciate the research and information you're putting out there. Anyways, my question is regarding omega-6 from healthier sources such as nuts, seeds, egg yolks, and avocados. I used to consume a large amount of almonds and olive oil to maintain my weight, but stopped after reading Dr. William Land's work on omega-6 and omega-3. I started going down the internet rabbit hole, and before you know it, I am at Ray Peep's forum where everyone claims any amount of omega-6 will send you to an early grave. Since I am a follower of popular opinion, I switched most of my fat intake to highly saturated, almost instantly felt worse. After a year on a high saturated diet, my glucose was constantly higher, cholesterol levels increased, and I looked like shit. I wasn't as lean anymore and felt sluggish throughout the day. I'm really tempted to switch back to more of a mono poly fat type diet, but there seems to be so much biochemical evidence against it. Walter Willett seems to think it's not a problem, but Dr. Lands, um, P what are you, is that a P Peditarians, Peditarians. yeah. Chris Masterjohn, Jaminet, et cetera, make such good cases, although one could argue that most studies vilifying omega-6 are actually showing the negative impacts of industrial seed oils instead of natural sources of omega-6. What are your thoughts? I, I, man, it's a really good question, and it pops up a lot, and uh, Roberto kind of hit it with that. I really think that the studies are basically showing that industrial seed oils suck, and um, other sources of omega-6s are just really not um how do they say it like pe persons of concern or you, you know a, a, a molecule of concern um i, I talked to matt Lalonde about this a, a lot and where this really becomes a big deal is if you have inadequate epa and dha as a baseline then these these issues become a bigger problem but then beyond that and you know it's funny because i vilify epidemiology on the one hand and then jump in and use some epidemiology, but consuming nuts and seeds, just like whether you're paleo or vegan or fucking whatever, like everybody's like nuts and seeds are, are pretty darn good. I, I think getting a variety of those and not being really um, uh, uh, super set in, in consuming too much of one variety, even though I eat a shitload of blue, <laughs> blue diamond smokehouse you're almonds. I, I eat the <laughs> pants off those things, but I am just so unimpressed with the the clinical and this again like we've talked a fair amount about labs and uh, John Wellborn uh, has looked at this where he's followed more of like the super high saturated fat low polyunsaturated fat intake and he feels like shit his blood values go kind of sideways his good friend Tom Inkladon which Inky is kind of crazy like he's he's crazy dude super smart but again and again he's found that people that are really top heavy on the saturated fat like they they end up just this systemic inflammatory deal and like bad glucose disposal and everything and so yeah i i um i'm I'm unimpressed with the, the argument to avoid well, nuts, clearly, clearly seeds. it's not you're not feeling good you're yeah. not looking good yeah. so so clearly for you it makes sense to make a shift and, and try to get to where you're feeling great in the morning. Your, your body composition is where you want it to be. Your numbers look good. I mean, it's yeah. sort of that N equals one scenario. Like, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a, a lot to be said with that. And again, um, you know, a, a way that you could get a really nice baseline on this is looking at that LPIR score, which provides... Uh, a marker of systemic inflammation called glyc A, which is is so much better than uh, uh, C-reactive protein. I'm going to have Dr. William Cromwell on. He will be one of the people that will probably interview uh, serially. Um, something I've noticed, like Mike Ruscio, there's just a couple of people that provide so much value to folks when they listen because they're just fucking on point. And people always get something. So instead of kind of a random grab bag, like the interviews I'm, I'm noodling are going to be more a curated process of people that just consistently provide value to the listeners and are really mm -hmm. on point with stuff. So William Cromwell is going to be another person that will come on and talk about specifically why glycate is so powerful as a marker of systemic inflammation. And again, this is something that you can experiment with. Maybe you... Uh, take a baseline out of your Ray Pedian uh, uh, kind of scenario and then alter it for a month, two months, and then get a 
reassessment, and I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say that if your LPIR score improves, if your insulin sensitivity dramatically improves, if your glycae improves, if you look, feel, and perform better, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's probably a net win, all things considered. Yeah. Okay.